Whether you're struggling with the Mac or just want to be able to style on him so you can brag to your friends, I've got you covered. Here's all you need to take down the Mac without getting hit. The good thing about all boss fights in Rogue Legacy 2 is they have amazing telegraphs that give you plenty of time to react. The key is identifying the telegraphs so you can learn to respond properly to each of the incoming attacks. So what are these telegraphs and how do you avoid them? Well, if he looks like he's powering up for leg day, then he's going to use Magma Mass. Wait for him to land, and I like to stand between the first and second Magma Sphere. If he's threatening to stab you, then back up. These volleys are really annoying if you're caught jumping, so only jump when you have to, normally over the first and third volleys. If he pulls out his staff with no indicator on the screen, he's going to pinwheel spam. So to give you the most reaction time, I like to back up and patiently dodge. The massive red laser that he blasts you with is more bark than bite, in the sense that he leaves a massive gap between himself and the laser, allowing you to stand right under his nose and hit him for free during the duration. If he pulls out his big sword, there's a couple options. Backing up so that you're out of range is a good idea, unless you're in a corner. So what I like to do is dash back out of range, then dash back in and spin kick over his head before he gets his flame pillars up. This is more consistent for me and allows me to get more hits in. Now during his transition phase, these fireballs do track you, which can be annoying, so I recommend using a defensive spell here or talent. However, with a well-timed jump against the wall and ceiling, you can typically dissipate some or all of the fireballs. Phase 2 is more of the same, the major difference is being an extra magma sphere on his magma mass, an extra flame pillar on his sword, and more fireballs on his pinwheel. If you use the strats for the first phase, then the flame pillar and magma mass are no real issue, However, you do have a tighter window now between the pinwheel attack. Back up and dodge the first one, then take a couple steps in, and you'll always dodge the second one. Due to its pattern, it's easier to try to use the setup than to read the second volley. Now for the fun one, Lamech Prime. For being the first Prime you have access to, this is actually surprisingly more difficult than the other fights hit list. To have any reliable strategy, you will need a good talent or spell to avoid some of the damage. My personal recommendations are Windwall, Shockwave, or Bastion, as they all cover a very large area and deal with all projectiles. But to show you that it can be done without these tools, I chose to use Combat Roll. Shield also works, but the timing is finicky. His Magma Mask now has a Void Wall with every cast, so what I like to do is dash in, then dash back out, look for the gap between the final two spheres, as now the gap on the inner spheres is much tighter. His pinwheel now tracks you, however there are many less projectiles, so this actually isn't too bad of a mix-up. The sword attack is much larger in this fight, and the area is much smaller than before, so it's almost necessary to jump over his head now between his sword strikes. His dagger volley can cover a much wider area now, but by either jumping on the first and third volleys like you did before, or if you're already mid-air like me, landing and only jumping on the second volley, you're able to remain relatively safe. His charge attack is the most annoying attack in his arsenal, and while not even worth mentioning in the base fight, it is the main reason I recommend using a defensive spell or talent for this one. The charge is easily enough avoided, however he now leaves behind resonant projectiles that stay on the ground for way too long. With no way to remove them outside of spin kicking, you're leaving yourself at a major disadvantage. His laser is a bit larger than before, and you can no longer reliably stall midair while waiting for him to finish, so right under his nose and behind him will be your safest options. The transition phase is now much more annoying as there are two rounds of seeking fireballs, and with the walls, floors, and ceilings being covered in spikes, I highly recommend using a defensive ability here to avoid them. However, you can without one. Phase 2 really only adds difficulty in the magma mass and pinwheel attacks, both of them adding more projectiles. While magma mass can be avoided the same way from the first phase, just with a little more distance, the pinwheel attack is a lot more annoying and I recommend using a defensive spell or talent here. There are a lot of things to look out for during this fight, but with a good loadout and practice, you'll be doing hitless fights in no time. I hope this helps, and I'll be releasing a guide on Biarth and his prime variants in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.